Do you ever wish you could make time stand still? When you want to boil an egg for just three minutes, you need a device to measure an accurate time interval. One of the simplest is an egg timer. But if you want to know the time of day, you need a clock. What if the clock isn't going? You can always get the time off the telly. How can you check that your watch shows the right time? One good way is to use the radio. When you hear the Greenwich time signal, you know what time it is. The, secrets of the, British resistance revealed the last pip is exactly on the hour. All our time is based on the way the sun seems to move across the sky. Before clocks were invented, the sundial was high technology. How does it work? When is the shadow shortest and why? And when might a sundial be no use? The sun doesn't really move across the sky. Instead, the Earth spins in space and half is lit by the sun. Let's stop the Earth as morning reaches Britain. Smiling kids are leaping out of bed, eager to get to school. In America, everyone's fast asleep because it's the middle of the night. And in Japan, the kids are trying to get their homework done before neighbours. Let's spin the Earth round a bit. It's now half past ten at night in Britain, so... What do you think's happening in America and in Japan? One of the most amazing clockmakers ever was a village carpenter from Barrow-on-Humber in Lincolnshire. His name was John Harrison. In the year 1714, Queen Anne offered a reward of £20,000 for the first person who could design a clock that would keep really accurate time on board ships at sea. So he set to work at once. For 50 years, he invented weird and wonderful machines. To begin with, they were huge, but in the end, he produced the most accurate clock in the whole world. And it was small enough to hold in the palm of the hand. A copy of this little clock went with Captain Cook on his third voyage around the world. Captain Cook didn't survive the trip, but the clock did. And after three years at sea, it was within one minute of the correct time. This was really important, because if your ship's clock was just one minute wrong, you could be 17 miles too far east or west. You could easily crash into Cornwall and run onto rocks. He had solved this problem, and that was why they had to give him the money. Most clocks rely for their precision on a natural timekeeper, like this special pendulum. It swings first one way and then the other, taking exactly the same time for each complete swing. Things that go backwards and forwards like this are called oscillators. A vibrating rubber band is an oscillator. You can get this slow motion effect in front of your TV screen. Most oscillators move to and fro about a central position. The further it moves away from the center, the stronger the force pushing it back. When the pendulum swings, the force of gravity pulls it down from each end of the swing.
all you have to do is pull it back and let go, and you have a good, natural timekeeper. The period of a pendulum is the time it takes to make one complete swing. What variables do you think might affect the period of swing of a pendulum? Every pendulum has a heavy mass on the end to help it swing better. Some of these people are heavier than others. Will that affect the periods of the swings? Only one way to find out. You don't need to time these pendulums. You can see the answer. If mass doesn't matter, what other variables could be important? In about the year 1600, a famous Italian scientist made an important discovery about the swing of a pendulum. In Pisa Cathedral, most of the congregation had nodded off. But Galileo Galilei was daydreaming about science. He noticed the incense burner swinging overhead and wondered about the period of the swing. Was it always the same? He decided to time each swing against the pulse in his wrist. Now the pendulum was swinging much further. Would that make any difference? No. It didn't seem to matter how far the pendulum swung, the period didn't change. Galileo was struck by the reliability of the period. Many clocks use pendulums. Some are quite long, others are short. Both these clocks keep good time. So does that mean the length of the pendulum doesn't matter? This clockmaker's doing an experiment to find out. He's taken two grandfather clocks out of their cases. One has its usual pendulum, about 100 centimetres long. On the other one, he's fitted a special short pendulum, only 25 centimetres long. Both clocks start at 12 o'clock. What do you think will happen as time goes by? The one on the right with a long pendulum is going much more slowly. Its pendulum is four times as long and it's going at half the speed. What do you guess is the link between the length of the pendulum and its period of swing? What do you need to make a clock? First, you need a natural timekeeper, such as a pendulum. Second, you need a source of power to keep it going. Third, you need a counter to count the swings. As long as you have these three elements, you can turn almost anything into a clock. Even a mountain bike. The pendulum goes at the back with its mass on the end. Gravity pulls down the mass on the pedal and this is the power source. It pulls the chain and turns the back wheel. The wheel is the counter 
and acts like the second hand of a clock. But what makes it tick? Here's the answer. These aluminium prongs are poking through the spokes. They're attached to the pendulum, so each time the pendulum swings, it lets one spoke escape between the prongs. This is called an escapement mechanism. With this natural timekeeper at the back, the bike runs like clockwork. What sort of power sources do clocks and watches use today? What about the hands on a clock? The hour hand takes 12 hours to go round, but the minute hand goes round every hour. How do you get one hand to go round 12 times faster than the other? What you need are gear wheels. Wheels with teeth. First, count the number of teeth on each wheel. Mm -hmm. Then, mesh the teeth on the wheels and see how many times one goes round for each turn of the other. This is called the gear ratio. So if this is, this is 20 and that's 40, yeah. And logically, that should turn twice before this turns once. Turns once. Twice. 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 Yeah. Yeah, it did. Mm. Now, here's the problem. To make a clock, you have to get one hand to go around 12 times faster than the other. Suppose you had these gears to work with. Which ones would you use? And how? This group reckon they've cracked it. But will it work in a test? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mountain bikes have lots of gears, usually six or seven on the back block and two or three on the chain wheel. Right. You got all of it, I know. How would you investigate what different gear ratios you can get? Seven, 38, 39, 40. Right. And why do you choose a low gear to go up a hill? What does a clockmaker need to make a real clock? He needs a power source. A coiled spring works well. Then he can start to put the mechanism together inside the case. These gear wheels will drive the hands at the right speeds.
These prongs are important. Can you guess why? They're part of the escapement mechanism, and they are what makes the clock tick, just like the prongs on the bike. It's tea time. He's got a guest coming, and guess what they're having to eat. To get everything just right, he needs perfect timing. How would you design and make an egg timer using ordinary household equipment? These scientists have a mission to make the perfect soft boiled egg. One group are going to burn a measured length of birthday candle. Another plan to let a measured amount of sugar run through a funnel. The third group have used a kitchen ladle to make a pendulum. They calibrated their timers by trial and error. Mainly error. That's not ready at all. So, which of these timers do you think is best? And could you make a better one? If, if that's on there, we don't want to have to take the label off all the time. And could you design a mechanical clock that would run for an hour? Go like that, that's true. I know, but we'll have to undo the label all the time if we've got a strong one. It's only hooked on, it doesn't matter. <laughs>